Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Within this video I'm going to talk about tendon pain and tendon pain is generally a recalcitrant issue meaning that it comes back again either year after year or after rest as soon as you go back to your sport. So I'm going to share with you the top three mistakes that are commonly made that hold people back from properly rehabilitating their tendon. So the primary role of a tendon is to store and release energy. So if you look at a 100 meter sprinter, for example, as a sprinter down the track, the majority of that propulsive force is actually coming from the Achilles, which acts like a spring-like mechanism. So if you look at the structure of a tendon, it's got loads of tiny fascicles that wrap around one another. And as you contract the muscle, they slide over one another to create almost like a spring-like mechanism that's able to effectively store and then release that energy. So there's roughly about 10 different hypotheses as to what causes tendon pain. However, the general consensus from the literature is that overload causes tendon pain and degeneration. And one of the easiest ways to look at this is tendon capacity and tendon load. So the capacity of the tendon only ever exceeds the load that you put on it. However, if you massively ramp up the load, suddenly start playing basketball or intense sports when you're not used to it, the load goes much higher than the capacity and that can cause pain and irritation. So you wanna reduce the load or increase the capacity and this should help you to rehab the tendon. Also, I've put the most important mistake at the end of the video. So if you could take the time to watch all the way through, not only will it help you out in terms of having some really useful information to rehabilitate your tendon, but also YouTube really promotes those videos that have a longer watch time. So if you watch all the way to the end, then it will help me out as well. So this brings me to the first mistake, which is rest. Do not rest a tendon, it's an absolute disaster. We know that rest can result in tendon weakness, it can result in weakness of the muscles surrounding it, it can result through weakness in the entire chain, and it can also lead to slight adaptions in the brain that make it so much harder to rehabilitate after. So we know that the strength of the tendon is only as much as the load that you put on it. So you really wanna to start to load up the tendon so it's really nice and strong when you go back to sport. The issue is if you rest, the capacity of that tendon is just gonna drop and then as soon as you go back to your sport and you start to put more load on it, it's then gonna go back into that cycle of becoming a painful tendon. So research into tendons has been coming on absolutely leaps and bounds in the last few years and they've actually shown that a painful tendon has actually got more healthy tissue than a normal tendon. And part of this is an adaptive procedure. So the tendon becomes a little bit thicker, but essentially it's because you're building more and more healthy tendon cells within that area. So we've got a lot of fantastic tissue that we can really work with and start to load up. Within this model, you really wanna treat the donut and not the hole in the middle. So you don't wanna worry about the tendon degeneration or partial tears or whatever you've been told, especially from scans, Actually, you just want to focus on the load and building up the capacity of that tendon. So you really want to increase the capacity through load because you've still got healthy tissue in the tendon that can tolerate the load. And then you'll find that when you go back to load in the tendon, the capacity is nice and high and you're not going to spiral back to having pain. So that being said, the second mistake is loading the tendon too much. If you're still skipping or doing plyometric activities like jumps and bounds and it's causing pain in the tendon, what you're doing is creating a slight degeneration in the tendon. So you're just dropping the capacity lower than the load. And what this does is creates pain and degeneration and really slows down your recovery. So what you wanna do is find your optimal load. And you do that by monitoring the pain the day after. So the healing time for a tendon is typically 24 to 48 hours. So if you load the day before, wake up in the morning and see how stiff the tendon feels. If it feels the same or better, then you're on a right level of load. And if it feels worse the morning after or stiffer, then you know that what you did the day before is probably a little bit too much. And then you can start to adjust and monitor it accordingly. So probably the best way to load the tendon is understanding the hierarchy of loads that you're placing on it. So right at the top, you've got bounding, jumping, explosive movements that ask the tendon to really act like a spring. Somewhere in the middle, you've got your slow calf raises, so moving up onto your toes, and then moving down, or say your slow squats if it's a patella tendon that's irritated. And then right at the bottom, you've got your static or your still holds. That requires a lot less load on the tendon, and also you're not asking it to act like a spring. A great way initially to work out where the tendon is is just by doing static holds. So you can do this maybe three sets of 45 seconds if you're able to tolerate it. You wanna avoid the top end of the movement as it might create a bit of compression on the tendon. So work within your mid ranges 
and hold it there for 45 seconds. You should find that the calf will start to fatigue, but what you're doing is putting a nice gentle load on that tendon, which is just gonna increase its capacity bit by bit within your pain tolerance. As soon as this isn't sore and you're able to progress, you wanna go through your slow contractions. So you wanna go all the way up onto your toes, again, avoiding that top end of compression as it might cause a little bit of discomfort and then just really slowly come back down. And you wanna do it for about four seconds on the way up and about five seconds on the way down. And this is just putting a really elongated and slow load through that tendon. So you're starting to load up the healthy tissue and again, increase its capacity. So the third big mistake of tendon rehab is not considering the brain's contribution to the rehabilitative process. So we know that if you're doing those exercises and you're really loading up that healthy tissue bit by bit, the capacity of the tendon is going to increase. But what we don't really see is a change in the brain and a change in the motor cortex as a response to the loading that you're doing. What we typically tend to see in individuals with tendon pain is a bit of a mismatch between the accelerator and the break of the tendon. So essentially in these patients, it's a little bit like they're pressing on the accelerator and the brake at the same time. And this just leads to excess load on the muscle and excessive load on the tendon as well. So what we want to do is incorporate techniques from neuroscience in order to help address that altered pathway of excitation and inhibition. And the best way of doing this is using a metronome. So if you're externally pacing your activities using a metronome, you're not only going a lot slower than you normally would, so you're getting those strength adaptations to the tendon and the muscle, but also you're really affecting the motor cortex in the brain and you're getting different things to work together in order to help rewire this pathway. So this happens because you start to fire up the little interneurons in the brain. So your auditory cortex due to listening, your motor cortex due to performing the activity, and also the frontal cortex due to concentrating on the task. So you fire up and use your whole brain in order to repace the movement. So a great way to do this is to put your metronome on 60 BPM and then load the Achilles by raising up for three seconds. So the slower that you go, the more load that we're able to put on the tendon per rep and then down for four seconds. And you're going for about three sets of six to eight repetitions for three times a day. So if you find this painful, then you really want to modify the range that you're working in. So instead of going all the way to the top of the movement, maybe you want to go until you just start to feel a little bit of discomfort, come down a little bit and then work to that range. So in summary, the three main mistakes for tendon rehabilitation are first of all rest. Rest isn't good for the tendon and can further degenerate it, especially if you're wanting to go back to sports. The second is too much load. So essentially you want to work out the capacity by listening to the tendon and seeing how it feels the day after and never exceed in the load. So you don't want to do too much too soon. And the final mistake is not considering the brain's contribution to the tendon. So you want to externally pace the exercise in order to really help with the acceleration and the break in order to help rewire the slightly altered pathways that can occur with tendon rehab. Thanks again for taking the time to watch the video and I really appreciate you watching it all the way to the end. If you could hit like and also the subscribe button as well, that way you'll be notified when my next video is released. And I'm going to work on a few different tendon videos and also there's just tons of great tips and tricks that you can do in order to keep yourself in good nick. I'll catch you in the next video.